recently the worsening of the pandemic situation in Shanghai, Jilin and other places has led the government to step up the prevention measures. This in return has led to the increased economic costs and has drawn public attention on China's so-called dynamic zero COVID policy. Many investors question if it is necessary for China to continue with its dynamic zero COVID strategy, while most Western countries have dropped their prevention measures and decided to live with the virus. Selena, why does China insist on dynamic zero COVID? Dynamic zero COVID strategy is not about aiming for zero infections, but creating the saving of lives first and to ensure economic and social stability. The Omicron variant is less severe. Many people are asymptomatic, but still capable of transmitting the virus and causing large numbers of infections. In China, the vaccination rate of the first dose is only 44%. While for people about 80, it is even less than 20%. The COVID mortality rate for elderly is dozens of times higher than a normal flu. And for elderly who are age 80 and above, the situation could be 100 times worse. Abandoning epidemic prevention measures in China could create political and social instability. With 1.4 billion, China has a huge population base with only 10% infection rate and the current global mortality rate of 0.3%. The number of deaths could exceed 400,000. What's more, medical resources are insufficient to cope with the current situation. Only two doctors and 4.3 beds are available for every 1,000 people in China. Nearly half of the top 100 hospitals in China are in Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou. And still, in order to handle the current situation in Shanghai, the central government has sent tens of thousands of medical staff there. The situation could be much worse in those provinces with less medical resources. What will make the policy change? When the price is affordable, China could choose coexistence. China is already seeking its own style of coexistence. Lockdowns in some provinces disturbed only individual communities, but still allowed the national economy to move on. The Chinese government tries to lower the price by encouraging booster shots and vaccination of the elderly, with consumption vouchers in Beijing, daily lucky draws in Shenzhen, etc. China also pushes the development of COVID mRNA vaccines. There is good chance that two to three of those vaccines will be approved in China later this year. The spread of COVID causes headwinds to economic growth. What will the Chinese government do to catch up its 5.5% GDP target? The urgency for more policy support has increased now that Premier Li Keqiang has mentioned. Step up policies in a timely way. China's monetary policy will be more proactive and will be introduced earlier than planned, accelerating the issuance of project bonds and physical expenditures will help boost the infrastructure and manufacturing investments planned by the government during the two sessions. Financial subsidies for small business and low-income goods are necessary. For example, central government already gives a one-time subsidy as a little compensation of lockdown. We expect to see major efforts from the Chinese government in boosting the economy in 2022 in order to achieve its growth target. That's it for today. Thank you for watching and hope to see you again in the next episode.